Hello, and welcome to my 3D printing lab. As home printers have become more sophisticated and parts approach manufactured quality, I've been exploring using 3D printing to create useful shop tools, perhaps eventually to create machine tools using predominantly 3D printed parts. Creating fabrication tools from plastic instead of metal requires solving problems with precision, strength, and repeatability. Browsing the web recently, as you do, I ran across the concept of a workbench torque arm. These arms are commonly used to hold lamps, microphones, video monitors. They have the nice feature that they support the weight of the payload cantilevered away from the base of the arm while allowing free movement within a working volume, and they can keep the payload at a fixed orientation as it moves in space. Workbench arms can be used for tools like routers or drills. It takes the weight of the tool and allows it to move freely, but always keeps it a right angle to the workpiece. That seems really useful. Unfortunately, they're really expensive. The cheapest I could find on Amazon was this model for nearly $1,000. This seems like a good 3D print project. I'm going to build one around my Dremel tool, which weighs around 500 grams. I built this mock-up of the design I plan to implement. The first stage is an arm that pivots on a base and angles up to a fixed height. I made it kind of loose, so I have to hold it in orientation here. The second stage also pivots around the end of the first stage, and it can pivot up and down, allowing the tool to be brought into contact with the work area of the table. The vertical rotation is constrained by parallel linkages so that the tool, in this case a, a vinyl cutter, is always kept 90 degrees to the surface of the bench. This up-down rotation axis has an internal torque applied, in this case using an elastic band, which counteracts the torque from the weight of the tool. Ideally, it's tuned to be exactly the opposite of the current load at every position, but it always needs to be stronger than the load to hold it up off the table. I'd like to avoid purchasing bearings for my builds. Fortunately for me, YouTuber Positive Altitude has developed some really easy techniques for adding bearings directly into on-shape CAD drawings. I've added a link in the description. The second stage upright pivot has to resist twisting, so I made the barrel a long tube with bearings at the far ends. I'm using 6mm plastic airsoft BBs, which are plentiful online, although you need to get good quality ones to make sure they're round. The inner shaft is made from two parts that press fit together, making for easy assembly and disassembly. The second stage arm consists of two linkages joined with pivots at either end. I made each linkage out of two identical parts glued at the middle. Parts are designed to nest together for a slimmer design. For the pivots, I'm just threading machine screws through holes in the plastic. The fixed part of the joint has a hole slightly smaller than the screw diameter, and the free part has a hole slightly larger. The plastic deforms to make its own threads in the smaller holes, and the friction is strong enough to prevent the axis from unscrewing when it moves.
The pivot attaches to the arm with super glue and is registered using a 3D printed finger joint. I also added another block to give the torque springs more leverage. I found out that having the springs too close to a direct line with the arm required them to be stronger than I wanted for the strength of the 3D print. Moving the axis off the line gave me the force I needed without ripping out the attachment screws. I made the springs for old surgical tubing. I didn't get a video of this, but the eyelets were just super glued into the ends of the tubes. The connection stayed strong despite the flexing of the rubber. The end effector is a very simple half cylinder clamp that fits my Dremel. It also attached with super glue. I clamp the pivot down to check for flex in the upper stage. One elastic is enough to hold up the weight of the Dremel and there's very little deformation. Everything stays rigidly in place when operating the linkages and the Dremel bit stays relatively upright. I measured 1 to 2 degrees of deflection off 90 degrees when cycling the arm up and down, and the force required to push the arm down increases as the spring extends, but I can live with both of those. I'm pretty happy with this performance. The lower stage is built on another 3D printed bearing. This one has a large thrust bearing like a Lazy Susan on top to deal with the weight of both stages. There's also a bottom bearing that keeps it from twisting. It all snaps together with another press fit in the center. The bearing screws down to a scrap of wood. This just provides a wider base so I can stack some weight on for testing. The arm is fixed at a 30 degree angle. I added some rails and holes to add strength and rigidity, which as we'll soon see, totally doesn't work. The stages come together with more friction fits. It's immediately obvious that the lower stage is not nearly rigid enough. The entire upper stage leans over as the ar lower arm flexes and the tool is nowhere near vertical. Worse than that, any motion of the upper stage gets it bouncing like crazy, and all that force tore the base bearing apart. None of these parts are nearly strong enough for the loads they have to bear. This is disappointing, but it's what I set out to find out. My plan for improvements to the next prototype focuses on three things. Uh, obviously, uh, a rigid and robust first stage is required to uh, hold the whole thing up. Uh, I'd also like to get more even torque from the reaction springs uh, as the arm goes up and down. And I should have a replaceable and tunable end effector to allow for swapping tools or for adjusting uh, fine-tuning angles. Thanks for watching. See you next time.